Welcome back YouTube. Today is hamstring day. I've done a bit of a tits up to be fair because I thought that today was squat day but today's hamstring day and the last video that you saw of me was hamstring day so I do apologise but it is what it is. Today's session is pretty much the same as last time so we'll aim to get some more weights, some more reps and um, I've also got Kerry and um, my client slash friend training alongside me today um, which will be fun obviously you'll be able to get and see a difference between a bikini girl training and a figure girl training even though the exercises are pretty much going to be exactly the same perhaps just different in terms of load and the amount of muscle mass that we both carry um, but yeah pretty much exactly the same session because we both need to get our bum's a lot bigger but her bum is definitely a lot bigger than mine already but mine needs to get a little bit larger so yeah first exercise is the adductor I'm going to move on to that now thank you I'm very stuck. Thank you. <laughs> you feel really good today. Will you help? Sorry. Thank you. All the way through, come on. And again. Through, come on. Come on. Heavier than it's back. Huh? Heavier than it's back. <laughs> Ready? Three, two, one. Probably, thank you. Thank you. Oh, bloody Nara. Go, go to, and what did we have last time? Two and 15? Ten. Oh, two and 10. We'll just go two, yeah. Good. Control it in the middle. Yeah. Pause again and drag in. That's better. And again. Oh. And squeeze here. Squeeze. Spend a second in the middle. Yeah. In. Come on. Lovely. Nice. But you're going to go for another one. quick. <laughs> that was good. You, yeah. Felt like it got heavy from like rep six. Ready? Three, two, one. one. Yeah. Let's go. And this is strong. Yeah, thank you. Oh. My head just feel like they're going to fall off. Oh. 
because this this is a new movement for you, right? Ish. Yeah. I think I mean, these are great. These are good. <laughs> these are good. They're in. I'm in good in. This How come you switched it up? Uh, my the RDLs are definitely a little bit more glute focused compared to an SLDL. Yeah. But my hammies also need to come up a little bit more. They're a bit more erector focused compared to a, an RDL. When are you competing? Not, not until the beginning of next year. Right, okay. I've got so. my first diet phase of off season in four weeks. Have you? Yes. So you're rinsing this bit. I'm just so excited because I'm not going to have a big fat oh, base. That is, that's the bit, isn't it? I think we're going to break down a little bit of a difference between a glutes and ham session for me compared to obviously Kerry, who is a bikini competitor. Again, this may not translate to all bikini competitors or all bikini competitors, but for the masses, it will. So when it comes to a hip hinge, during a glutes and hamstring session. I feel like it's a really integral part because it's a great way to build your glute ham time, um, as well as obviously other areas. For me, I'm gonna do an SLDL because my RDL has been rinsed for quite some time. For Kerry, she has to stay very specific. I'm not saying that I'm not staying very controlled okay. and focused on everything, but I can get away with being a little bit more grip and rippy because it's okay if my erectors get a little bit of something. Huh? It's okay when my glutes and hamstrings get a little no, bit of something. No, I literally haven't even said like, it. Like, it, it is okay. Whereas no, for someone like Kerry, especially because she's already though, got like, a good soon. amount of density to her physique, she has to be very like, careful with, with her a hip hinge so. that she keeps it predominantly on her yet. glutes and hams Not good. and nothing else takes over. So Sorry. that obviously we don't start building muscle where it doesn't need to be. Especially for her being where she is, like she is a professional, she has got a good amount of muscle. She doesn't need to build base muscle because there's already a lot of muscle maturity there for her. Uh, I'll see what three plates feel like. Cause I've been a little bit poorly. I don't want to yeah. cause my body to feel any worse. this a little bit more tight and a little bit flatter. That's better. That's good. You see it fire onto your glutes way more when you do that. Oh really? You almost go, okay. rather than being. Yeah, I sometimes do. feel like I am a bit like that. It's because you... It's not intentionally. I, at the time I think I'm not. And then when you look back, you're like, you can see it. <laughs> I watched the video and I'm like, Car tight, ribs down. Good, come on. Try. Up, oh, come on. That was a good set. Good, yeah? Yeah, it was a good set. Felt good. I was more conscious of my core. Yeah. I think it's thinking about your ribs being in rather than being extended. Yeah. If you want to keep the chest tall, but not to a point where it's arched, just neutral. And I think that's probably what's... I think because you also try and think about... But you don't want to be like that. You want to be... Just... Let's go. Let's go. 
Come on. Let's go. Yes, yes. Wait a minute, how many did you say you got? I think I got seven. I think you got, wait, I thought you got eight, but. That was a rep up, and definitely a weight rep PB ever. I'm actually very happy because, I'll talk about When you uh, an assisted athlete, and then you come after this insurance season, obviously body competition changes. Initially, that kind of like, fierceness in the gym goes a little bit compared to what it was but I've actually managed to continue progressing not as excessively as when I'm on cycle but definitely still so it's actually quite nice Let's go. Let's go. And again. Good. Does that feel good? Huh? Does that feel okay? Yeah, felt good. Really shaky. <laughs> yeah, a bit. Shakes aren't a bad thing. I'll, I'll move this other one. I always feel them though, like, properly now. Good, because you used to hate them. Huh? You used to hate them. Absolutely. Like, just felt my back. Just felt my back. Didn't do anything from... I used to, like, love stuff like that, and then... I don't know what happened. If you are someone like Kerry, who lower back hurts or back hurts when you're doing an RDL more than anything else, it's generally due to your core brace and positioning. So obviously an action point when you talk about an RDL is making sure your shoulder blades stay back and your chest lifted. That doesn't actually mean that you need to be like thick and really lifted. It basically just means that you need to keep them in a nice neutral position and make sure that they stay there. With that, what will happen is when you keep your core nice and tight and lead with your hips, your back will come with you. If you're trying to actionally bring your shoulder blades back and keep your chest up, you'll try to keep it up as the hips go back and you'll just take a big arch into the lower back, which will put a lot of tension onto there. Whereas obviously that's not what you want. You want to make sure that everything stays nice and tight and so that you can bring your hips back so that your chest is pretty much parallel with the floor before you then drive back up. I feel the knot in my hamstrings and my quads. I think only the last last time I did them, I stopped the set because I was like, I can feel it in my quads, it's annoying, but I don't know what's changed because I wasn't, I don't know, maybe it's just getting back, but I also find on the um, reverse hypers, I always feel my hamstrings more, do yeah. you as well? Yeah, that's okay. Is that like normal? Yeah, it's because you get a lot of stretch into your right. um, back of your knee, I reckon that's why you feel it, but you can tell that it's literally all blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can see it. And, yeah.
Thank you. Come on, let's go. You want to make sure, if you're in a Smith machine, obviously, that you've literally got just the bench at the top of your shoulders. You want to make sure that your hips stay under. You want to make sure that your knees stay around 90 degrees and that your shins stay nice and vertical. The range of motion to keep the tension into your glutes is minimal. Obviously, if you want to incorporate other muscles, you would go a little bit deeper, but in order to keep all the tension onto your glutes, your range of motion is pretty minimal. Obviously, myself and Kerry will uh, demonstrate it well for you now. They just get you like that. <laughs> They're so bad. Little bastards. Next exercise is the leg press. The real difference between myself and Kerry, so figure to bikini, is that obviously my the majority of my leg presses are quad focused. Um, obviously you still get an element of glute in them and adductor, but predominantly quads. There's not really much point in me doing a, a glute focused leg press for, for me and the, the class that I'm doing. Whereas predominantly Kerry and most of the bikini girls is there really any need for them to do an actual quad focus like press? No, because they don't need big quads. So their compounds really need to be based around the thing that they need the most, which is obviously the glutes. When it comes to an amateur bikini girl, someone that's like really at the start, a beginner who's not really got any muscle mass, they may need to do something like a quad focus like press if they do need to bring up a little bit of base muscle. Um, but obviously, Kerry does not because she does not need any more quads. So that is why we're doing two slightly different leg presses. The difference between the two leg presses is obviously you'll see me go into flexion, so my knees will travel over my toes. That will mean that I will engage my quads, as well as obviously a little bit of glute and a little bit of adductor. And then for Kerry, because her knees don't go past 90 degrees, so they don't go into flexion, the majority of her tension will go into her glutes and a little bit into her adductor. But because she's narrow, it will be predominantly into the glutes. You can never, ever, ever get your hamstrings on leg press. With the way in which the resistance profile works, you'll never work your hamstrings. How many are you aiming for here? Uh, like 10 to 12. If my belly doesn't get in the way.
Keep going. Am I allowed to wear my knee wraps? <laughs> if not, I'll go for The reason that we use knee sleeves is not to give us that support and bounce at the bottom like what a, a wrap does. It's literally there to be to warm the joint for it to feel a little bit safer. So I don't need my sleeves to be ridiculously tight. Could get them in a size smaller, and they would be, but they would give me that helper, especially at the bottom of a rep. So Kerry's not allowed to use her knee straps, what are they called, knee wraps, after today. They're, they're a new, um, but until she gets her sleeves, she's probably gonna get some hard body ones and she's gonna use Meg 10. No, ah! Wait, she's gonna use some, she's gonna get some hard body ones and she's gonna use Code Meg to get some as well. Come on then. Good. Let's go. And again, let's go, come on. Drive. Uh. And again, come on. Up. Come on. Uh. Nice, and again. Drive it up. Come on, come on, all you. Good. What would you want on? doing anything. Come on, let's go. Stay strong. Good. Thank you. Feels different. That's lovely. Yeah. Feels different. This is lovely. There's nothing that I'd change with that. Yeah? Yeah. Ignore me, just just go. Okay, when you come down, I want you to go like this a little bit. Oh, yeah, there we go, that's nice. That's a nice stretch through there. Okay. Yeah. So it's like that, almost. Yeah, but don't let it arch. But shall it be, the, yeah, there. Yeah, lovely, very nice. That's perfect. How does that feel? Good. Lovely. Beautiful, very nice. Beautiful, lovely. I can see that foot working. Lovely, cool. that's nice. That's lovely, perfect. Good. Good, let's go. Come on. Drive. Keep your weight in your big two. Let's go. Big two, big two, big two, big two. Drive. Drive. And again, and again, and again. Core tight, let's go. Drive. Very nice. Good. 
Very nice. That's oh. nice. Jesus, Lord. This is a really bad angle for me, but you are going to have to... Can you see me? In order to allow your glute to be able to work, you need to make sure that your whole foot is planted. Big two, little two, obviously your little other ones in between as well, and the heel of your foot. If you're wobbling around too much, you will not be able to connect very well with your glutes. So make sure that your full foot is completely planted. That's why I was giving Carrie the cue point big two, because she was letting it go. We both had very similar injuries in our foot, so I understand that it becomes a bit lazy, just the big toe sometimes, because she can't feel it very much, much like myself. So she has to make sure that she can place it all the way through the floor so that she can feel full contact and be able to fire up them glutes. If you want to learn about glute engagement, honestly, if you actually watch Baxter's posts at, Bax at Coach Baxter on Instagram, his stuff's really useful. It's the way in which I've been able to learn how to use my glutes effectively but honestly, they've been such great cues. They're so simple and effective. Literally being able to actually switch off my glutes to allow them to then work when I'm training has been the biggest thing that I've learned. So if you don't follow him, follow him because you will get to learn things from him. Good. Come on. Good. This quad. Thanks, Billy. So, single leg leg press. I've changed mine from that to, sorry, from walking lunges to that. So, with that, obviously, yes, with the way in which my stance was on the walking lunge and also on here, there is a lot of glute that is engaged, but we don't want to obviously not do quads because, again, I am big competitor, I'm not just a bikini competitor. So my knee's just going to flexion like what I did with a walking lunge. I um, have a bad foot. If you go back to 2018, I had a really bad car accident where I shattered my foot. So I struggle a lot with things that are on my tippy toes. So because I am quite heavy, that's why the walking lunge was hurting it quite a lot. So that's why I moved over to the single leg press. With Kerry, no, obviously no, no, she needs no, a lot no, of good. She doesn't really want to yeah. be tapping into knee flexion. I mean, you can do a single leg leg press that, that does, but you do tend to find it quite hard to keep the knee from going into flexion. And for her, she just tends to take a lot of tension into her quads from doing something like that, which is why we do the split squat instead, a unilateral movement that biases her glue completely. Okay. 
obviously it's really great to learn how to train well, but you have to have something in you to be able to train really hard and be okay with that. It's like Kerry, prior to working with me, she wasn't quite as precise with her movements, but she still trained very hard. That's why she does have the physique that she does. She would be able to obviously create it in the way that she wants it to look. She needed to train a lot better to be able to target the muscles that she wanted to, but she could train really hard. So make sure that if you are someone who perhaps doesn't train very well or very hard, you have to have both of those things. You have to really be able to push it there and it be okay with it feeling uncomfortable because that's the way that you are going to be able to build good muscle. That's why everybody can't do it or do it look the way that they want to. Regardless of whether you are natural or assisted, you are going to have to really dig hard and dig deep and go to a place that not many people can go. Oh. Oh, 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 what a bastard. Oh. Oh. On my glutes and hamstring session, my lion leg curl comes towards the back end of my session. In my quad focus day, my hamstring curl is a real priority because it stays at the front end of my session. Because this session needs to be different to my other session, we need to allow for other movements to take priority, like my SLDL, like my um, Smith hip thrust. That's why this one goes to the back end of the session with my lion leg curl. Oh, what a YouTube. Thank you very much for watching the session. Hopefully you took some useful information away from it. Um, yeah. Please like, share, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. There's nothing more for me to really add. Um. <laughs>